Hi there, my name is Shane Sterling. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I am in my office right now. This is where I upload videos and make music and do what I do. This is my sanctuary here. And I wanted to share something that I was reading on Facebook. So I have a lot of vegan friends on Facebook, obviously, and it's interesting to read comments because I always get a glimpse into where people are at, you know, who are not vegan, because when someone makes vegan posts and, you know, about the consciousness of being vegan, there's a lot of pushback from our society, you know, and it's easy to get discouraged about it. It's easy to feel like there's no reason to be vegan because millions and billions of animals are going to die anyway. But of course, that's not true because really, if we're honest with ourselves, we know that we can make a huge difference in the world when we change ourselves, when we step up and we make a difference in our life. One person making a change, not supporting slaughterhouses, makes a huge impact on the world. And we can see this by leaders throughout history, you know, Gandhi and Martin Luther King Jr. preaching nonviolence. And, you know, look at Gandhi doing like a fasting, you know, to make the his points and stuff, you know, self-sacrifice and and being able and being the one who is willing to be the change and make the difference starting here, starting with the self. I just wanted to read this comment someone posted in uh, Facebook. So here, I'm going to just read this. <clears throat> Okay, reminder, animal flesh and secretions don't have any magical properties. There isn't a single essential nutrient you'd need, you'd be unable to obtain as a vegan. So if everybody could just stop regurgitating the old, some people need animal products for health shit, that'd be great. So, hey, you know, first comment below that says, are plants not living creatures? What's the difference between a life form in the shape of a cow and a life form in the shape of a carrot? Obviously, one is closer in form than the other, but does that make it less worthy of life? You know, I really wanted to talk on that because, man, that's, it's important. You know, a lot of people think that. A lot of people say that. I'd say the number one comment I see on, on vegan-related posts like that is that exact comment. Well, plants have feelings, too. Plants are consciousness, too. Plants are alive, too. You know, um, but let's be real here. I mean, obviously a, a cow and a carrot are not the same thing. A cow is a sentient being. A carrot is an alive, um, is, is a carrot is alive, but it's not a sentient being. A sentient being has a brain and a nervous system, you know, has eyes, is going to have some sort of, you know, life connection, connection to its birth and death. Probably the desire not to die and the desire to live, like all life, just like us. That is sentient life. Now, a carrot is life, but it is obviously not sentient. So we really need to be honest with ourselves there. I'm sharing this post here on Facebook because I want to bring it to people's attention. I want to bring it to people's attention that this is common for people to think that there's no difference between a cow and a carrot. You know, how are we going to move forward if we don't think that cows have any value different than a carrot? You know, and this is really the paradigm of carnism. This is the paradigm of eating meat. We're disconnected from sentient life. We're disconnected from where life comes from and what life is. You know, we're disconnected from the divine nature, the wellspring of what creates life with eyes and brain and consciousness. You know, it's really important to have deep reverence and respect for the sentient life. And that is the cows. And that is not the carrots. You know, the carrots are here. Vegetables, plants in service. You know, plants obviously make fruit to be eaten. Vegetables grow to reproduce. There is no harm in eating plants. You know, we, we all have to eat plants to survive. Every single living thing eats plants. But it's really important not to make the mistake that um, we should disregard sentient life in that way, the way that that was described in that comment. And, you know, it's such a great disrespect 
to sentient life to be indifferent like that. That's what I see it. It's not a hatred. It's not that we it's not that we hate the cows or the pigs or the chickens. It's that we're indifferent. We're indifferent to their life, you know, and we're indifferent to the suffering they experience at our own hand. And we're indifferent to the experience they're having because we don't feel they're worthy of the same experience we are. And that commenter there said the word worthy. So obviously in their belief system, a cow is not worthy of the same life that we are. A cow is in service to us to do what we will with it. And that is not to take into regard the life and the sentientness of that consciousness. That cow wants to live. That cow wants to have offspring and love its babies and have a family as well. And just because it was bred into um, the farming system to be slaughtered for meat for humans doesn't mean that it would be there. If we all stopped eating cows, the cows would not be bred into existence. The only reason the cows are even in existence at all is because people are choosing to support slaughter. People are choosing to support putting that into their lives and into their consciousness. So if we stop, the breeding will stop. And then we can be stewards of life. We can have respect for life. We can have reverence for life. We can take life into our body in the living foods, raw living foods, fruits and vegetables, baked to perfection in the sun, perfectly delivered as a prepared food by God for humans. Just as nature intended in living harmony and balance, we have evolved to a place where we no longer need to kill animals. The animal kingdom, carnivores in the animal kingdom, do need to kill to survive. Humans have evolved past that stage. We don't need to kill to survive. We've evolved past killing for survival. Therefore, we are on an evolutionary path. Where do we want to evolve to? Where are humans evolving to? We need to ask that question, and we need to be responsible for what that answer is. Just because we have killed in the past or we've needed to kill to survive doesn't mean we are going to evolve that way. We need to evolve as conscious stewards of all sentient life. And that is where humanity is evolving to. I'm going to just put my uh, stake in the ground and say that I don't know how long it's going to take thousands of years, tens of thousands of years, but humanity will evolve away from eating meat. I do believe humanity will be a vegan or even a raw vegan society eventually. And like I said, tens of thousands of years, it doesn't matter because that's where we're evolving to. Conscious, sentient life is to be revered and to be respected, just like our own life is respected and revered by us. So of course we're going to evolve there. We're, of course we're going to evolve to be more thoughtful, more conscious, more friendly, more caring, more loving for all life, because we've, we're already experiencing that path, that trajectory. So let's embrace it more. Let's all embrace more compassion and more life in our lives by being uh, vegan. Let's stop the meat, dairy, and eggs for compassion, for our own consciousness, for evolution of humanity, where we're going, and let's take responsibility for that. So I've done that in my life. I am here in service to that. I hope you can do that in your life. Um, you know, thank you for being on this video with me. Hope you have a great day. I'll see you in the next one.